Hello there. How are ya? Welcome back to my channel. Um, we're talking about self-love and our wonderful series that I'm putting together for you. Uh, let me see. One of the things I'm going to talk about today is um, letting go. That's a big, big um, issue for a lot of people. And um, letting go. Oh my God. Drop that damn hot potato, girl. You know, if we keep on holding on to that emotion of feelings that we don't want, it makes it a little more difficult for us to acquire self-love. You know, um, and it starts with letting go of the past. You know, the past is the past. It's done. Whatever happened, happened. And now is the present. You know, we don't know what's happening in the future, but now's the present. But we have to let go of the past. We can't carry it with us. You could, but honey, if you're if you're if you're ready for a big old, you know, truckload of uh, luggage, it just it it just it gets difficult after a while carrying all that baggage from the past. And um, it takes time, you know. Like in most of my videos, like I said, all of this takes time. Letting go of the past takes time. So be patient with you. If things come up, you know, just remember that all of this takes time. And knowing that it takes time, um, while, you're, while you're deciding in, on how to let go of, pa of the past, right? You, um, things might trigger you through life. And uh, you have to remember that in cer certain cir circumstances, there's, um, there's a lot of sides to every story. So like, let's say I'm having an issue with someone or something or something that happened. You know, it's my past that I'm dealing with, my triggers, my experience, how I've absorbed them through the years and how I filter them out. And then I'm also dealing with this other person's feelings and past and experiences and how they're dealing with it and then there's the truth. So knowing this fact helps me be able to let go of certain circumstances. Um, because if you don't and you take things personally, you're just going to go down a deep dark rabbit hole, honey. And you do not want that because it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Um, so in order to process this, let's, um, let's talk about feelings. Now, I'm a super empath. I feel a lot. And um, I also have boundaries. So I know that certain people feel a certain way. I have my feelings. And uh, we'll talk about that issue later on. But it's all about really feeling. Because the reason that we have emotions and feelings is they're our guide to be able to take us through this journey of life. And uh, knowing this, it makes it easier for us to maneuver things around. Not that uh, sometimes things might happen or trigger us about the past. That doesn't mean that it's not gonna hurt. But when it hurts, if we actually look into it and check out the emotions that we're feeling really deeply, and we're like, why am I feeling so bad because of a situation or a person said something or did something, whether it be intentionally or not intentionally, but we're feeling hurt and it's okay. Don't invalidate your feelings. Your feelings are always right about your experience in life. So let's say something happened to me. I get hurt. I look into it. And I'm devastated. Of course, I'm an empath. So we really, really, really feel. And whether the person did something intentionally or not, whether the situation was intentional or not, my feelings are still validated. And I have to look into these feelings and why am I feeling this way? Um, also keeping in mind that there's so many variables going on because I'm also dealing with another person or a situation that has nothing Nothing, nothing to do with me. So don't take it personal. But 
I'm still feeling, right? I'm still feeling. So I have to process why am I feeling this. And then I have to think about it. Okay, there's this feeling I feel. It's very bad. So really bad feeling. What is it? Is it resentment? Is it sadness? Is it depression? Is it fear? What is the feeling? And then you let that sink in. Once you're able to describe what the feeling is, is it sadness? Why is it this and that? Then you think about it and I'm like, wait a minute, have I felt this feeling before in the past? Have I felt this before? And then you're like, yeah, I remember I felt this way five years ago when this happened or this person did this or something like that. Okay, dig deeper. Did it happen before that? Did it happen before that? And, and as you're processing this, what I like to do that helps me out a lot, I like to sit down, I meditate, I breathe, I put my hands over my heart center, because remember, it all starts from the heart. And as I'm taking deep breaths in and letting them out, deep inhales and exhales, I'm actually trying to feel what other occasions did I feel this feeling and I keep going back and, and I keep on going back and I keep on going back and all of a sudden you're two years old or you're one year old or your earliest memory and you carry that feeling with you and that's where the healing starts once you identify when you first in your whole life, remember having that same feeling that you're feeling right now because of something that happened to you. Then the healing starts. Uh, I'm going to tell you something really personal. I actually, I haven't told anybody this before. And um, so I'm just going to share this with you. My experience is, um, I remember my father... My father, um, he, my mother would go out. I think she was working or something. And she would uh, stay and babysit for me or something. You know, anyway, he was responsible for me. And um, he was a man that wasn't a very responsible man. I, I don't know. That was his own thing. You know, that's another Oprah Winfrey show. <laughs> Love you, Oprah. Um, but it's like he would leave me at people's homes to take care of me and then he would go off and do his own thing and then come back and pick me up and then um, bring me back home or whatever, you know? And so I remember that the feeling that I would feel because I work on this process, you know, it's a process that I've been working on for years, but focusing on it actually has helped me. I remember crying. I think I was like two years old and I was crying. My face was you know, against a cold window pane. And I was looking outside, crying and crying, crying. And I remember seeing my father leave. And he would go off, to, uh, God knows where. Anyway. Then the next time I felt that feeling was when I was um, left alone again at somebody's house. And I remember there was strangers sitting down on couches. And I was crying and crying and crying and crying. And as an empath, you know, of course, I'm a very emotional child. So these, these occasions of me just, you know, being abandoned, that's where it came, being abandoned, that's where the source of the certain feeling came from. And then fast forward, when I was 15 years uh, young, my father uh, picked up and left and, uh, my, you know, uh, left my family, left me. He just left. No Dear John letter, nothing, just left. And and I remember sitting down in the bed and, and just crying all night long because this man um, left us. And, you know, he was like, I was his favorite one, even though he was just, you know, he was just irresponsible and he would leave and do his own thing. I was always his favorite one. So I was like, you know, um, I could do no wrong. And, um, but he left, he left and having that feeling of abandonment, and it was abandonment. Um, 
it later on in years it has made me it a little more challenging for me to really accept people's love because they're going to leave me in my head in my head in my head so this is something i work with and i'm just being totally candid because on my channel i'm going to be candid with you about who i am you know it's it's all you know it's all on the on the table so it's like it's these little things that i work on so um now when i have uh relationships with people i'm like okay is that feeling coming back my father left i didn't speak for him over 25 years you know 25 years went by and then later on i forgave them and i'll i'll um you know just solve for myself really and um, I'll talk about that later on, some other show. But so knowing that this feeling was not the situation or the person that might have happened right now, but it was because of my aban being abandoned. And I remember when my father was on his deathbed and we had forgiven him and he started crying. And I was like, Dad, why are you crying? And he goes, because... I don't deserve you being here on my deathbed, you know, with so much love. And I'm like, Dad, I forgave you already. You don't have to worry about that. And he says, yeah, but I abandoned you. And I, I never thought it was abandonment. I'm just like, okay, he was a deadbeat dad and just left and whatever. And I was like, yeah, he did. You son of a, you know, no, I'm just kidding. But, um, but I was like, yeah, he did abandon me. So knowing that, now I'm being able to process certain feelings and filters and um and it's something that I don't like that feeling so I have to let it go and if um you know people might not know that I'm dealing with this issue and if they know and they do things well that sucks you know because that's that's pretty shitty but anyway um it's just so once we are able to pinpoint the feeling that we have when did we start feeling a certain way and then start healing that child? It's mostly, we mostly have to start healing the inner child anyway because of things that happened in the past. And once we know that, we're able to um, deal with relationships, deal with people, deal with ourselves, love ourselves, letting go of the past, letting go of those emotions that don't make us feel good. Just letting go. And then there's people that stay in toxic relationships uh, because they they don't think that they deserve better, you know, and, and so they don't let go because they've been beaten down. They just don't think that they deserve better. And there's another process. Why am I not letting go of this relationship? Why am I not letting go of this toxic friendship or relationship? Why? Because I don't, I don't think I can get it, anything else better. Because I, I don't deserve it. Because I'm not good enough. And then you start processing these feelings. And then that's where the self-love comes. You are enough. You are beautiful the way you are. And once you get that in your head and in your heart. You're going to be able to continue this slow sometimes. Or quick sometimes process of self-love um sometimes people do things that we're not prepared of because we're like whoa i didn't know this person was like that wow this is that but then once you know that that person is that way or or or, or that situation is going to come up like that again and again and again and again and again then you have to be like okay where do i let go do i want to feel that again do i want to feel the same feelings again and again and again or do I know how to deal with a person? You know, you just don't take them seriously. Or you're just like, well, that person's in pain too. And they've had a past. And they were probably abandoned. Or they were probably molested. Or they were probably, there were so many variables. And when we know that there's so many variables, we don't take things personally. And if we do, that's okay. If you do take things personally, that's okay. Because the healing process is... It takes time. It takes time. But sweetie, once once you get it all, you know, it makes it easier. When situations arise that you get that same feeling, you're like, wait a minute, okay, let me go uh, let me go heal that inner child a little more. You know, I, I, I need to rock and cradle that baby a little more. So anyway, I hope this helps you. 
and as it helps me just talking about it with y'all. And thank you for letting me in your lives. And please, please subscribe to my channel and like and share. I really would appreciate it. And then I'm going to continue on the self-love uh, journey, t tips and topics about it. And so thank you for letting me into your heart and house. Bye-bye. Have a great day.